What is up guys? Welcome back to another awesome episode of Railroads Online. My name is Evil1 and in this episode we are taking a look at the new update. The Beta Branch March update has just dropped. Today is Monday, March 25th, 2024. I would highly encourage you to go check out the dev vlog for this update. They do a really good job of explaining a lot of the uh, things. I think Goku is the one that hosts it. Or narrates it and it did a phenomenal job and I'm really excited to show some of these things and give you my thoughts on this update again this is for the beta branch so one of the new things we got is the, the survey tools this is something that I've been asking for for a very long time actually I, I've really wanted this uh, because laying track especially with a helper helping you Maybe you start at one and they start at the other. It can be kind of hard to determine your height difference from you versus your friend. So in order to activate this tool, you press down on the scroll wheel and it's right up there. Drop that down. We'll place this. Now this is my first time ever seeing this uh, and playing with it myself. So and then we have another one, as you can see here, and they're pointing at each other. I believe you can have as many of these as you want. So if we place another one down like right here, you can see that that is went away. Well, that's right. We have to have like a menu item or something uh, track. I think track will do it. Uh, how about not logging? Let's see. We can go to the track. Yeah. So track it brings up the the measurement tool as well. And you can see it's pointing back to itself when they're green and they are uh, saying zero percent. Now this one's looking at the one I have on right now. I believe to remove this thing, we just come over here to the destruction portion of it. Looking right down there at the bottom of the screen. It says rails and we push the T key to change it. And I think we want props to delete it like that. Perfect. So let's leave that one there and let's get some altitude. Okay, here we are up on this hill right above our yard. That first theodolite is way down there at the crosshair. Now let's see if we bring up another one, points to it, and it says it's, oh, it's going to take some getting used to. It says it's, <laughs> so it's pointing at each other, okay, well, there we go. So it's five, negative 5.1 degrees at this length. If we were to lay a track from this point to that point, we would have to be at negative 5.1 uh, degrees slope that's good to know when you're planning your route you can say from here to that would have to be if you want to make like one straight shot that would be whatever that gradient is alternatively for flat ground if you have a lot of uh, undulations in the ground like around here let's pull it up again that you wanted to place one here this is where your track is going to be you just kind of place them along this layout here. Now we can... Oh. <laughs> kind of wish they hung out just for a little bit. All right. So now we can see the slope that we'd have to lay our track uh, to make it even with the ground. Now, obviously, we wouldn't want to lay track across here like this, but this would be a good indicator that maybe we don't want to come this way just because we have this big steep hill here. Until we can actually excavate into the ground, uh, then, yeah, we don't want to be building track right through here. That's That'd be dangerous. Very cool. I'm very happy to see this. You'll probably see me use these things a lot in my track building videos. So keep an eye out for those. They're, I think they're a great tool, a great addition, uh, a much needed, long anticipated addition to this game. The next thing I'd like to talk about is flight mode. Now, as far as I know, everybody has this ability now. It used to be I would grab an industry, I would usually grab the water well. And that would lift me up in the air and I can go flying. And I'm actually not off the ground now. You can see. They have to look up in the air. I'm moving forward and that puts me up in the air. And I don't go running really fast. It's still pretty quick. But it's not, when I let go of the key, I come to a stop. As before, I would kind of keep moving quite a bit. So that's with those industries. You can also do it with track now. 
So here we have our track. If we want to get a bird's eye view, we just look up in the air while running forward. Now we are up in the air and we can lay our track like so. This is going to be great for getting around and for looking at our, our plan. Say uh, we wanted to run a track that way. Well, we could just start laying our track down. We'll connect it up to this line here. And we can go up in the air. Kind of get a bird's eye view. Be like, oh, okay, we want to go. Actually, we want to go that way because that's a little cut in the ground. If we don't want to climb that, we can go around it. You know, it gets it gives you a little bit easier uh, method, I guess, of, of seeing the world. And we're obviously going to be using it for getting around much easier. So the next couple of things I'd like to talk about, you will see right where I'm standing is the coal cars, the EBT hoppers that we left here. Uh, I'm going to head into the buy menu. And here it is, the D and RG Class 47, our new 10-wheeler locomotive. I know some of you are very excited to see this, and so am I. I, I love this, this style of locomotive. Uh, apparently it's very quick, Now we're going to check it out here in just a second. But let's take a look at some of our options. We have a bunch of different smokestacks. We have a bunch of different headlight options. Kind of like the bullhorns. And of course we have a bunch of different paint options as well. Oh, just four of them. Let's go ahead and order this. Now, there it is. You'll notice that we're not standing on the buy track. The buy track's over there. This um, crosshair is gone. This locomotive will spawn, I, I thought it was going to be like right in front of you, but apparently it will spawn uh, wherever. <laughs> I guess the closest track to you or something like that. Not 100% sure on that, but basically we can, we're not tied to the bike track anymore. So that's going to be super helpful. Say that you don't want to have your bike track, you know, in the center of town or, or wherever the devs decided to put the track and you're not limited to the space either so you, we can get a straight piece of track and just start buying rolling stock and configure your train as you buy it from my understanding so let's re-rail this because we can also fly while re-railing i'd like to put there we go Ooh. Grab the tender as well. Go. And we got to get the fire going in this thing. So while we're waiting for some steam, let's take a look at it really quick. So as I said earlier, it is a 10-wheeler, a 460 configuration. It's, these are some pretty big drivers. This this locomotive is going to move. It's It's got to. Let's take a look here, some of the detail and the modeling. One thing I really enjoy about this game is just the sheer amount of detail that they put into into these uh, all their modeling. Like you can see all the dust and all the particles. 1883 Baldwin, super cool, phenomenal job your air compressor got the generator up there just a good looking locomotive right here turn that headlight on I just realized is that a <laughs> we got a generator but is that must be a gas light we have generator for the train cars we were pulling like passenger cars or something like that not sure take a look at the tender basic basic tender not much really special about this tender and so while we're waiting for the 10 wheeler to get warmed up and build a little bit of boiler pressure let's head back into the buy menu take a look at something else that we just recently got that would be this guy right here <laughs> Oh, wow, it's big. 
So this is the RGS Rotary Snowplow number two. It is a steam operated big snowblower. See, here's those big old teeth on it. This is just discharge chute right here. It does take an operator inside the locomotive, but it is, n or excuse me, not in the locomotive. The snowblower is steam driven to turn that uh, big blade, that big auger, but it is not self propelled. You need to have a locomotive to push it. So let's take a look at the options here for this locomotive. Okay, so let's uh, see what kind of different smokestacks we can get. I'm not sure where the smokestack is at. That'd be up on top somewhere. I think it's probably right there or right back here. Let's get up here. That's probably it right here. Let's see. Yep. We only have two options. We got flush and tall. We'll go with the tall one. Headlight. A couple different options for a headlight. A bunch of different options. All right. And paint. It's like number one is brown, green, red. Kind of the white, bluish color. That's it. Okay. The snow plow tried mounting the back of the train. That's fun. So a little bit of hitbox issue there. Not sure what's really going on with it. Let's scope this thing out really quick. Go ahead and open that door. We'll climb inside. Right here we have our brake. We can turn it on and off. What's this? Enter vehicle. We can enter the, the vehicle UI. Come back here. Let's open this hatch. Come through here. Oh, here's the controls. Okay. We have a break here. The flanger. Now, I believe the flanger... Let's come out this door here. Are these little wings right down here? These wings actually clear the snow uh, off the rail and out of the middle of the track, I guess, perhaps. Let's open up these hatches. You can see all the, the running gear. <laughs> On this side, we have our reverser, but basically we can make the uh, auger turn one way or the other. Get a little bit of coal in here. Get this guy warmed up. Well, that's warming up. Let's run back to our new 10-wheeler. Look up to the tender I see. We do have pressure now. There we go. All right. Let's hear that whistle. Nice. It's kind of high-pitched. I'm not going to ring the bell. All the bells sound the same. So, I've been kind of uh, dancing around this one here. Let's take a look at the new UI. There we go. So, over here we have our normal sliders like we are used to. We have our reverser control here. We have our regulator. We have our brake. You'll notice over here on this side, we just saw our uh, application error go up. There it's coming down. Brakes are released. This is our, the red one is our, our pressure, our air pressure. There's our boiler pressure, our miles per hour speedometer. This is our water temperature, our fire temperature, our bell on and off. How much sand we have, how much water we have, and how much fuel we have in the firebox. You can see here, currently we don't have any fuel in the firebox. We'll put some in there in just a second. These are our steam cocks, I believe. This is our compressor. This is our generator. So cranking up the generator apparently doesn't do anything. Must turn on the lights in the passenger cars. You can see the little bit of steam coming out of the generator. Can't really hear it though. Turned it off. Still got the steam coming out. Air compressor's going. Then up here we have our whistle. Up the top. 
So let's add a little bit of coal to the firebox. Kind of hard to read. We got 29% in there. Apparently I'm having a hard time hitting that. 57, there we go. That should give us enough to take a look at that scale now. I've also noticed every time we enter, we have to reset our view. You can see the coal is kind of different colored. That's just say it stands out against the black. Not a big deal at all. I actually really like this new UI. Uh, it, it, it's a lot better than what we had. So, Okay, so the next thing that I'd like to show is the knuckle couplers. That's right, we have knuckle couplers now. Let's go into the op go into the options really quick. Go to gameplay. Now we are here in, in custom weather. Mine when I loaded in was automatically default set to on. I did hear in our Discord, please head on over to our Discord to get updates and stuff like that from us. A link in the description below. Mine was automatically set to on and uh, Ovon over in, on Discord said that when his was also set to on, every single one of his couplers were uh, unhooked. To be aware of that. So I turned it off. We're still link and pin. But as you can see, they're all actually hooked. Probably a bad example. They're all actually hooked. And I, I, I walked around over there at the yard and actually verified that they are all actually hooked. The mine was set to on as well. Options gameplay, let's go ahead and set that back to on. Automatic couplers is our knuckle couplers. Go back, back, continue. As you can see, now we have knuckles. So woohoo. And this is gonna make it super easy, especially for one person to be able to hook up a train very quickly, easily. Gonna go reverse her back, brake is off. Oh, I know what's going on. <laughs> we're just gonna do this, how about this? We'll just set the regulator back a little bit. We're gonna watch this couple up. Perfect. And it's coupled. Like, the way you didn't have to click it, you didn't have to add a pin, nothing like that. Let's go forward, try and pull this train off that snow plow there. Probably dragging it. I know we got brakes on this train as well. Let's turn them off. There it goes. Oh. That has got a beautiful chuffing sound. We're dragging that snowplow. At least the tender. <laughs> it coupled up. That's funny. That means that's probably why we're going really slow here too. Let me show you how we uncouple cars. It's super simple. Simply right click. And now it's, now it's kicked. We don't need to worry about that anymore. It is disconnected. You can also uh, remove cars on the on the roll. Like if you were going quickly in reverse or something like that, slam on the brakes, hit the, hit the coupler, you can kick cars off. Same with pushing them and, and that sort of thing. Alright, let's see what this locomotive can do pulling a train. There we got 20 miles an hour. 
We're still accelerating. This is all flat, too. I'm doing about 25 miles an hour. Very nice. Go ahead and shut it off here. I love that new braking sound as well. Applying the air with the, you can see the gauge. Super cool. Yeah. Love it. I'm wondering, too, with that gauge like that, if we're going to be getting train brakes, uh, air brakes. That that would be that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> okay, so let's head back. Okay, let's get this tender for the snowplow hooked back up. We'll fire it up. I bet you that fire's gone cold. <laughs> I was out playing around with this 10-wheeler. The other thing that bug fixed, they fixed the uh, coal connectivity here. Uh, it used to be like a black hole and you couldn't connect uh, anything to it, really. And they also fixed an issue with the coal not going into the tower. Apparently that's been fixed. This brake is still on. Turn it off. Re-enter this vehicle. Every time you got to zoom out. I don't know if I'm a fan of that or not. Click. Just like that, we are connected. Well, this is a tender, actually. Let's find out. I wasn't paying attention. Oh. So apparently we weren't connected to... Hmm. I see a knuckle coupler on there. Break. Go down and take a look. So it is open. It doesn't have a drawbar anymore because we're not linking pin or couplers. But it did not couple up to that. And I'm not sure about this connection. It says to open it. Let's try and hook up to it one more time here. We'll just go break off. Reverse or forward. Just give it a little bit. jump out and take a look at it here as it comes in. Okay, so it's not it's not going far enough, I guess. Like there's a disconnect there. Interesting. That's probably a bug. I'm sure they know about it. Uh, I can verify it by checking out their Discord, but um, not right now. So, for now, let us just push it. We'll pretend that it's hooked up. I was going to switch it back to Lincoln Pen, but I think that's going to be more of a pain in the butt than it's worth. So, let's see. Let's enter this vehicle. Same UI. But yeah, as you can see here, we have baffles, a flanger. Yeah, I can't see that flanger down there. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. There it is. YouTube might make that really dark. Let's drop it down. There we go. Super cool. So baffle. Not sure what that does. 
Oh. So that is our shoot deflector. Which way we want to shoot the snow. A brake, regulator, and reverser. Whistle. Wow. Sounds angry. Okay, so let's give it full... Well... Let's get some snow on the ground first. We want we want to see what this is going to look like with some snow. Okay, while we're waiting for it to pile up some snow, hopefully it actually piles up snow. There we go. Yep. Uh, let's check out. Let's give it some reverser and oh, reverser bar moves. That's super cool. Let's give it full steam. So all this is doing is turning that big ol' auger, throwing snow. We need to have this locomotive though pushing. We'll go. Brakes are off. Let's give it some regulator. Now we're moving. And we're clearing the track. Control our baffle angle. I hear it slowing down. Oh. We're running out of steam. That's not good. Uh. More coal. There we have it. That is the oh wow. rainbow after the snowstorm. That's super cool. That is the new snowblower. I really like this. It's obviously a two-person operation. So I love the animations with the uh, the running gear here. Super cool. It looks awesome. Oh, the brake was on. <laughs> That's why we weren't going very fast. All right. Now, let us check out something else that's really awesome. Go ahead and remove this section of track. Jump into our facilities here, and we have the new engine shed. Here it is. A new roundhouse. Now, from what I saw, this roundhouse is wicked awesome. Not open. There we go. It has an inspection pit. In all the bays. I also just noticed that the funnels are in the back of the roundhouse, so you actually pull in forward instead of backing in. Interesting. So, as far as I know, this is not designed on any actual design from this era. But, um... I'd kind of prefer to have the funnels on the front so you back in. I wonder why they did it that way. I don't know. So the other cool thing about this, is, though, is that you can actually put them together. Now, this isn't like a, a linked thing. You do have to get a little bit creative with your angles here. 
and I'm doing this really quick, I would spend a lot more time lining it up. But there you go, now you can have a roundhouse like that. In addition to the roundhouse, so track construction, we have the new turntable. Apparently, it will link to this roundhouse. I must be doing something wrong. There it goes. Okay, I was apparently looking at the wrong link. But now it is where it's supposed to be. Perfect. That's really awesome. So now if we come this way with the turntable, it'll automatically perfectly line up like so. Nice. And the fact that we can then add another roundhouse engine shed, they call it. Get my view right so I can see it. Something approaching that. That looks fabulous. Here's a new one. Yeah, it lines up. It it's going further in, only because. You know, I'm pretty bad about placing that. I mean, yeah, it was quick, right? But they're not perfectly lined up. So, spend a little bit of time, get yours perfectly lined up. I didn't see any color options. Yeah, there's no drop down for color options or anything like that. So, oh well. I can tell you that my roundhouse that I made back here might be getting an upgrade. I don't know. We'll see. We might be just maybe extending. I'm not sure. So for the other updates, let's head over to Steam. All right. So here we are. This is the beginning of the March update announcement found in Steam. We already looked at the Theodolite, the flying, We've got the new driving UI, the new ten wheeler. This is the engine shed and turntable we just looked at. Here's the knuckle couplers. The snowblower. They also added the one password for multiplayer to make things a lot easier for people joining to understand. I've re recently run in the, into that with uh, people joining us. They don't know exactly how to join. And because I always host, I can't really walk them through it because I don't join that often. And I'm not sure off the top of my head how to explain it. Here is this uh, dev vlog. I highly suggest you go check it out. And then here is the change log. Basically recapping everything we just talked about here in the new content. The quality of life things, which is great. Uh, the Theodolite flying mode. Uh, building track. They hid the helper UI that sits in the upper right corner of the screen and they removed the double password system. They also added the amount of sand to the sander lids, so it works just like the water and the tinder, where you will be able to see how much sand you have inside of there. And here's a whole host of bug fixes. I'm not gonna read every single one of them. Uh, the big ones are, they fixed an issue where industries would consume inputs to create one item. This applies to everything, including the, the wood depot. That's great, we ran into that a few times so confusing as to why we only got one or two things and it sucked down all of the inputs we worked so hard to do to, to deliver here is that fixed the issue where players could not connect to the coal tower and where they we, we would drop off coal but it wouldn't go in it wouldn't register in the tower and this one right here i ran into as well they were they fixed an issue where the delete tool would not delete certain cars tenders and locomotives that was really annoying, actually, because I would need to delete something and it, I couldn't delete it. I, it was like the little icon was going through. And if I had it set to all, I might be deleting track or bridge or something like that. And then, of course, they fixed the boiler water temperature where it was limited to 100 degrees C in the boiler, which is technically incorrect. 
The update water temperature follows the saturated steam curve with pressure buildup. Temperature values are now shown correctly in Fahrenheit. So that's great. Um, that would that never really bothered me too much because you know never never really paid attention. Don't need to pay attention to your uh, water temperature if it wasn't maxed out at a hundred. So and that's basically it. So let's head back to game really quick. All right, so let's take a look at that sander really quick. I forgot about that one. There we go. We can see that we are full of sand in this locomotive. So also really quick, I'd like to talk about a little bit of misconception with our playthrough. Uh, in the last episode, the season three finale, where we took Beast and a coal train with some cordwood and some food, up to Alaska, uh, it was thought maybe that we were abandoning Lake Valley. And that's not the case. Oh no, just the, the contrary. Lake Valley is about to get really stinking busy. The reason why is Alaska, there's no supply chain up there for anything. They're just mining gold. So we need to supply them with things like coal and cordwood, pipes, uh, rails, everything that they need, food, everything that they need up in Alaska, we need to supply it. And what better place to supply it than our very own Lake Valley. We'll be running trains regularly up to Alaska. And since the miners up there don't have a facility to sell their gold that they work so hard for, we will be transporting it back here to Lake Valley to sell. So quite the contrary, we're not abandoning this map at all. In fact, like I said, we're about to get really busy and we got a lot of money to make here as well because we are keeping it as realistic as possible and we are not cheating uh, in money, right? So we have to be able to afford all the new rolling stock, uh, the new snowblower if we want to get one in Alaska. We need to, to be able to save up for it and you know, we can start running some oil barrels and that sort of thing and selling a lot of stuff at the freight depot, which we've been doing. We have been working really hard behind the scenes, running trains and, and building up our supply, selling a lot of stuff, uh, just so we can buy things like the railroad itself, like the the new all the new rolling stock that we purchased, those high side gondolas and that sort of thing. Uh, all that wasn't cheated in. That was all paid for uh, by our hard work and, and uh, supply here that we haven't been filming we've been like I said we've been working really hard we've been chatting kind of behind the scenes too over in discord uh, quick reminder head on over to discord again uh, join the conversation there it's uh, it's kind of inactive right now but we use it more for just logistical planning and that sort of thing but we do talk uh, we, we post screenshots, we do all sorts of things. So head on over there, check it out, um, make it awesome. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly enjoyed making it. I'm super excited for this update. Uh, it's a big quality of life thing for me. I'm very excited for it. And uh, the new season four, episode one episode will come out Thursday at I believe seven in the morning Pacific Standard Time check it out it's awesome episode we worked really hard on it and uh we're gonna go from there so i hope you enjoyed this episode again hit that thumbs up button hit the subscribe button as well and we'll see you on the next one bye for now